Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day our dear listeners. I am Ms. Nurlaila M. Madid, a faculty member of the Mathematics Department from the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics of the Mindanao State University Main Campus, Marawi City. Your video lecturer for today. For today's discussion, we will be discussing all about Chapter 3, Logic. For the information of our viewers, this chapter is divided into three video lectures in which the first part is this one and the other two will be provided soon. We will start our discussion in a while, so keep on watching and I hope you learn something from this. But before anything else, let us have first a brief introduction on the history of logic. There are several mathematicians who involved themselves in the study of logic. One of these is Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. He was known to be one of the first mathematicians to make a serious study on symbolic logic. In his study, he even tried to advance the study of logic from a merely philosophical subject to a formal mathematical subject. Unfortunately, he never completely achieved this goal. However, there are several mathematicians who also contributed to the advancement of symbolic logic as a mathematical discipline. Some of them are Augustus de Morgan and George Boole. George Boole was known for his great contributions in this field through his book, The Mathematical Analysis of Logic, which was published in 1848. In this book, he argued persuasively that logic should be allied with mathematics and not philosophy. Following this is another book, An Investigation of the Loss of Thought, which was published in 1854. Concerning this document, the mathematician Bertrand Russell stated that pure mathematics was discovered by Boole in his work called The Loss of Thought. So, I think that is already enough information for the history of logic. For now, let us define logic. Logic is defined as the study of formal reasoning based upon statements or propositions, but it is also commonly defined as a science of correct critical reasoning. Additionally, logic is also said to be a belief that is supported by factual evidences. Moving on, we are now about to discuss logic statement. But before that, let us first recall the different types of sentences discussed in our English subject. We have learned that there are four different types of sentences. Declarative sentence, interrogative sentence, imperative sentence, and exclamatory sentence. Defining each of these types of sentences, firstly, the declarative sentence. Declarative sentence is a sentence that states or declares facts or opinions. Interrogative sentence is a sentence that asks a question. For the imperative sentence, it is a sentence that expresses a command, a request, an entreaty or suggestion. And lastly, the exclamatory sentence that is defined as a sentence that expresses strong or sudden feeling. Examples are the following. The first sentence is this one. Since this asks a question, therefore this is an interrogative type of sentence. The second sentence is this one. This clearly shows strong or sudden feeling that is being justified by the phrase, wow. Therefore, this is an exclamatory sentence. The third one is this. This clearly gives a command, hence this is an imperative sentence. Another one, we have this. The given sentence states an opinion. 
Therefore, this is a declarative sentence. And the last one is this, which obviously states a fact. Therefore, this is also a declarative sentence. Since we are done differentiating the types of sentences, I think we are now ready to define logic statement. A statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. To be more precise, a statement must satisfy the following conditions. First, it should be a declarative sentence, and second, it should be either true or false, but not both true and false. It means there should be only one truth value, that is, the sentence can be true or the sentence can be false, but never the sentence be both true and false. To understand it clearly, we have the following illustrations. First, the main campus of the Mindanao State University is in Marawi City. This is a fact, hence this is a declarative sentence. Furthermore, this is true for indeed the main campus of our dear university is situated here in Marawi City. Since both the conditions are satisfied, therefore, this is a statement. Second, what will be my grade in the course Mathematics in the Modern World? This sentence clearly asks a question. Hence, this is an interrogative sentence. Since the first condition is not satisfied, we can already conclude that this is not a statement. The third one is open the door. A command is expressed by the given sentence. Hence, this is an imperative sentence. Similarly to the previous example, the first condition is again not satisfied. Therefore, this is not a statement. Moving on to the fourth one, we have 2 is a negative number. This doesn't state a fact. However, this states an opinion. Therefore, this is a declarative sentence. Since we all know that 2 is a positive integer and not a negative integer, the sentence is false. Keeping this in mind, we have seen that the two conditions are satisfied. Hence, this is a statement. And the last one is given by this equality. Since we don't have enough proof to say that this is a fact, we will just be treating this as an opinion. Now, to identify its truth value, we will be analyzing the nature of this statement. By looking at this given equality, we have concluded that when x is 4, the equality is true. But when x is not 4, that is any value other than 4, the equality is false. Hence, the statement can either be true or false depending on the given value for x. Moreover, since the conditions are also satisfied, we can say that this is also a statement. A special case of statement is the open sentence. Open sentence is defined as a statement that involves one or more variables and which becomes true or false when the variables are assigned to specific values. In other words, for it to be an open sentence, this must satisfy the following conditions. First, it must have one or more variables. And second, it must be true or false when the variables are assigned to specific values. Following this is the truth set. A truth set of an open sentence is the set of all values that will make the open sentence true. In other words, this is a set in which its elements are those values that will make our open sentence true. Here are the examples. These are all open sentences since they satisfy the conditions. But let us identify those values that can make these open sentences true. Let's firstly deal with the first example. We have this. We are to find the value of x. Looking at the given equation, we have seen that two like terms are placed separately in the equation. 
one on the left hand side of the equation and the other one is on the right hand side of the equation. To find the value of x, we need to combine the like terms and this can be done through applying existence of additive inverse element. With the help of this property, we are able to write the equation into this one. And by subtracting the constants, we have found the value of x. Like how the truth set is defined earlier, we must firstly check if this value of x can make the open sentence true. To do so, we have this. Since we have verified that 4 can make the given open sentence true when it replaces x, we have already solved its truth set, and that is the set containing 4. The second example is given by this. Similarly to what we did in the previous example, we need to find the value of x. Looking at the given equality, we have again like terms placed separately in the equation. So, the first thing we need to do is to combine the like terms through applying existence of additive inverse element, resulting to this one. And by adding the constants on the right-hand side of the equation, we have this. To finally solve for the value of x, we will apply existence of multiplicative inverse element, which results to this. Multiplying these constants gives us the value of x. Similarly, we need to verify if this makes the open sentence true. By checking, we have the following. Hence, 6 is indeed a solution for the given open sentence. Moreover, we have the following truth set. The third example is given by this. In this part, we're going to solve for the value of x that makes this true. To solve that, we will be applying any method in solving quadratic equation. But the easiest way will be the one to be applied here, and that is taking the square root. Doing so, we have this, which we know this directly results to this. Now, since the given open sentence states that x must be a negative number, we will only be considering negative 2 as the value of x. By checking this, we have this one. This clearly shows that negative 2 is indeed a value that makes the open sentence true. Hence, we have this as our final answer. The fourth one is this. So again, doing the same method done in the third example, we have the following. Note that the needed value for x must be integers. Taking a look at the solved value for x, we found out that these are not integers. Therefore, we failed to find an integer value for x. Moreover, the truth set for this open sentence is empty. The last example is this one. Obviously, the expression written on the left-hand side of the equation is just the product of those on the right-hand side. Likewise, those factors written on the right-hand side of the equation are factors of the one written on the left-hand side. In other words, this clearly shows that whatever value is assigned to x, the open sentence will always be true. Hence, our truth set for this particular open sentence is the set of all real numbers. Now, we are going to discuss simple and compound statements. But before that, let us first recall the different structural classifications of sentences discussed in our English subject. These are simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence, and compound complex sentence. In connection to the topic I'm going to discuss later, we will only be recalling the first two classifications of sentences. The first classification is simple sentence. It is a sentence that has only one subject and one predicate. And the second classification is compound sentence. This is a sentence which consists of two or more coordinate clauses. This can also be defined as a sentence which consists of two or more simple sentences. Compound sentences make use of fanboys as connectives. Fanboys stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, 
and so. To clearly differentiate the two, we have the following examples. The first one is given by this. Note that since Lisa is the one being talked about in the sentence, she is the subject. Well, the remaining phrase will be the predicate. We can see in this example that we only have one subject and one predicate. Therefore, this is a simple sentence. The second one is this. Note that doctor is the one being talked about in the sentence, hence doctor is the subject. This follows that the phrase examined the patient is the predicate. Additionally, we have seen another important phrase and that is cured him, which is also a predicate. In other words, in this sentence, we have two predicates. Furthermore, the word and is used to connect two simple sentences, therefore it is labeled as connective. Since we have seen a connective being used in the sentence, aside from the two simple sentences, this is classified as a compound sentence. The third one is this. This clearly shows that there are two different ideas being emphasized in the sentence. In the first idea, we have the film as the subject, while in the second idea, the audience is the subject. Similarly, ended acted as the predicate for the first idea, while went away is the predicate for the second idea. Also, the two ideas are being connected by the word end, acting as connective. Keeping all this in mind, we have proved that this is a compound sentence. And the last one is this. Black pink is the subject in this sentence, while the remaining phrase is the predicate. We have one subject and one predicate, therefore this is a simple sentence. So, for this moment, I think we are now ready to define simple and compound statement. A simple statement is defined as a statement that conveys a single idea. And if a statement conveys two or more ideas, then it is called a compound statement. There are different types of compound statement depending on how it is used in a sentence and its connectives. I present here a table summarizing these types of statement together with its connectives and corresponding logic symbols. So, if you have fanboys as connectives for our compound sentence which I discussed earlier, here we have these following connectives which are being used in a statement depending on its type. Before going deeper on these types of statements, let us have first these following notes. The truth value of a simple statement is either true or false, while for the compound statement, it depends on the truth values of its simple statements and its connectives. To make it easier for us to identify the truth value of a compound statement, we will be presenting the corresponding truth table. A truth table is a table that shows the truth value of a compound statement for all possible truth values of its simple statements. So, these are the things that we need to mind for before moving on to the discussion on the different types of statement. The first type of statement to be discussed is negation, which is defined by this. This says that if we have a statement, say P, its negation is just the negative form of the statement which is denoted by this, read as not P. Like what I said earlier, we have a truth table for the negation of a statement. This table shows that if the statement P is true, then its negation is false. Also, if P is false, then its negation is true. To understand it clearly, we have these following illustrations. In these examples, we are asked to give the negation of the following statements. Firstly, this. As you can see, this is a positive statement stating that today is Friday. To have its negation, we will just be negating the statement, meaning we will be giving the negative form of the statement, that is, today is not Friday. Secondly, we have this. So again, 
this is a positive statement, to get its negation, we will be giving the negative form of the statement. That is, Sheila does not have two extra pens. Thirdly, we have this. In the given statement, we can clearly see that it is written negatively. Hence, to negate that negative statement means we will be giving its positive form. That is, the ABS-CBN franchise renewal was approved by the Philippine Congress. The fourth one is this. This is an open sentence stating that the two are equal. To have the negation, simply we have this. 3x plus 1 is not equal to 5. And the last one, we have this. The negation of this statement is given by this. The second type of statement is conjunction. A conjunction is defined by this. This means that if we have statements P and Q, its conjunction can easily be formed by using the connective end, which is denoted by this and read as P and Q. We also have a truth table for this type of statement and is given by this. The table shows that the conjunction of the statements P and Q can only be true if and only if both P and Q are true. Before proceeding to its examples, let us note this first. This states that but can also be used as a connective for the conjunction of the statements like and. However, this connective is used most frequently to precede a negative phrase. An example is this. Note that this conjunction statement is similar to this one, in which, in this statement, our P statement is this one, and this one is our Q statement, and is being replaced with but in this case. The third type of statement is disjunction, which is defined as this one. In this type of statement, we use OR as a connective. This goes like this. If we have statements P and Q, its disjunction is denoted by this, which is read as this one. Like the other types of statements, we also have a truth table for this which is given by this. In this table, it shows that a disjunction statement can only be true if and only if at least one of P or Q is true. Before taking the examples of these types of statements, let us have first these following reminders. So again, AND and BUT are used as connectives for conjunction, while OR is used for disjunction. For the first set of our examples, we will be considering these following statements. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to write the following compound statements into its symbolic form. The first one is this. Looking at this statement and by considering the above given statements, we have this one. And we all know that AND is used as a connective for conjunction, therefore this is a conjunction statement and is written symbolically as this one. The second one is this. Note that this one is just the Q statement but is written in negative form. Therefore, this is just the negation of the statement Q. And this one is the statement R. Again, this is a conjunction statement. Hence, this statement is written symbolically as this one. The third one is given by this. Note that this phrase is just the S statement, omitting the word not. Therefore, this is just the negation of the statement S. And this one is just the statement R. Minding the connective used, this makes the statement a disjunction. Hence, the symbolic form of this statement is this. And the last one is given by this statement. Note that this one is just the statement P but is written negatively. Therefore, we have the negation of the statement P. Another one is this. Looking at the phrase, we can see that it is just this statement but is also written in negative form. Hence, we also have a negation for the statement Q. 
Minding again the connective use, we have a conjunction type of statement. Therefore, we can have this as a symbolic representation for the statement. For the next set of examples for this topic, we will be considering the following statements. In this, we are instructed to write down the statements corresponding to the given symbolic form, starting with this one. To make it easy for us to give the statement, let us identify first what type of compound statement is being emphasized in the given symbolic form. For this item, we know that this is a conjunction type of statement, which means we are going to use and as a connective. Note that the statement Q represents this statement, so we're going to write it down here, and the statement P represents this, so we're going to copy that one here. And this will be the statement representing the given symbolic form. The second one is this. This is again a conjunction statement, therefore we're going to use AND as our connective. The next one is the statement R. Looking at the given symbolic statement, the negation of the statement R is what we need in order to correctly give the statement representing the given symbolic form. In other words, we are going to obtain the positive form of R since it is written negatively and it is done through omitting the word not. So we have this. And the next one is the statement S, which represents this statement. Writing it down here, we obtain our final answer. The third example is given by this. This is another conjunction statement which means we will be using the connective AND. Next one is the statement Q, but in the given symbolic statement, it requires the negation of the statement Q. So negating this statement, we have this. Following this, we have the statement R. Similarly, the given symbolic statement requires the negation of the statement R. And to get its negation, we will omit the word not in this statement. Hence, the negation of R is given by this. And finally, we have this as our final answer which can also be written as this one. And the last one is this, which is a disjunction statement. This means we are going to use OR as our connective. Looking at the given symbolic form, it requires the negation of this statement. In other words, we're going to negate the statement P and its negation is given by this. And lastly, we have the statement S, which represents this statement. So copying this, we obtain our final answer. For the last set of examples for this topic, we are going to determine the truth value of each given compound statements. Firstly, we have this. Note that this statement can also be written as this one. Considering this equivalent form, we can label this as our P statement and this one as our Q statement. Determining their corresponding truth value, we have for P that is true and for Q that is false. And since the connective used is OR, we have a disjunction statement. To know the truth value of this disjunction statement, we will be recalling the truth table for disjunction statements. Looking at this table, we can see that we are on the second case, that is, P is true and Q is false. With this, we are able to determine that cases like this gives a true value. Hence, the given disjunction statement is true. The second one is given by this. Similarly, this is our P and this is our Q. The next one is determining the truth value of each statement, starting with the P statement. This is true for indeed 5 is a whole number. However, 5 is not an even number, therefore our Q is false. The connective used is AND, which means this is a conjunction statement. Recalling its truth table, we have this. Looking at this, we are again in the second case, which shows that cases like this gives a false statement. Therefore, this statement is false.
The third one, we have this. Doing the same method done in the previous examples, we have this as our P and this as our Q. Our P is a true statement since the factors of 2 are just 1 and itself, making it to be one of those prime numbers. On the other hand, our Q is also true since we can write 2 in the form 2K where K is any real number and that what makes it an even number. And is again a connective used, therefore this is a conjunction statement. Recalling once again its truth table, we have this. Referring to this table, we can see that we are on the first case, which shows that any cases like this gives a true statement. Therefore, this is a true statement. The last one is given by this. To properly label this statement, we are going to rewrite it into its equivalent form given by this. Likewise, our first statement is our P and the second statement is our Q. Both our P and Q are false since 0 0.5 is a rational number and not an integer and not a whole number. Or is the connective used, which means this is a disjunction statement. Recalling for the last time its truth table, we have this. Looking at this, we can see that we are on the last case, which means this gives a false statement. Therefore, the truth value for this statement is false. And for the last topic to be discussed in this video, we have the special case for a conjunction and disjunction statement. This time, we are going to involve open sentences. To summarize this, I present here a table showing the statement and its negation together with their corresponding truth set. For the first type, we have a conjunction statement in which its negation can be formed by following this formula and its truth set is determined by this set. And the second one is disjunction statement, in which its negation can also be formed by following this one, and its truth set is determined by this set. To elaborate it further, we will be having these illustrations. Considering firstly this given universal set, we are asked to give the negation of the following statements and determine the truth set of its negation. But before that, let us first determine the corresponding negation for each statement and then after that, we will be determining the truth set for each negation. For the first statement, we have this. Note that this is a conjunction statement. Therefore, to obtain its negation, we will be following this formula. And by doing so, we have this negation. Second one, we have this. This is a disjunction statement. Therefore, we will be following this formula to obtain its negation. And also, by doing so, we have this. And lastly, we have this which is again a disjunction statement. Following the same formula, we have this negation. Since we are done determining the negation for each statement, let us now determine the truth set for each negation, starting with the first statement. In order for us to determine the truth set for the negation of this statement, we need to determine first the truth set of each simple statement. So, let us determine the truth set of our statement P. Note that this is a quadratic equation. To obtain values that will make this open sentence true, we need to solve for the values of x. And to do that, we will be applying the easiest way, and that is taking the square root. Applying it results to this one. By further application of the set method, we obtain these values of x. To verify if these are indeed elements of the truth set for our statement P, we need to consider our universal set. By looking at this, we found the value negative 2 and 2 within the set. Therefore, negative 2 and 2 are the values that will make our open sentence true. This can be written in a set form given by this. Now, since we have already a set P, we can now obtain the P complement. To do so, we will just simply be writing down those values within our universal set that are encircled. So, we have this. 
Next one, we will be working on our Q statement. To obtain the values of x, we will be doing this. And then, by solving these linear equations, we have the following values. Similarly, we will be considering again our universal set, and by looking at this, we only found 2. This means we will be rejecting negative 5, for 2 is the only accepted value that will make the open sentence Q true. So, we have this following set. Since we already have a set Q, we can now determine the Q complement. The same thing done with the P complement, we will be listing down those values within the universal set that are uncircled to obtain our Q complement. So, we have this. Finally, we have this truth set for the negation of the first statement. The second statement is given by this. Similarly to what is done in the previous example, we will firstly work on the P statement. This is a linear statement, so by dealing with this, we have this one which eventually results to this one. So again, considering our universal set, we found zero in it. Therefore, zero is the only value that will make this open sentence true and is represented by this set. With the help of this set, we are able to determine P complement given by this. Next, we have the Q statement. To obtain those values that will make this true, we will be substituting each value within the universal set to the given statement. And by doing so, we found out that these are the only values that will make the statement true. Hence, this makes our set Q. Obtaining Q complement, we have this one. And finally, we have this truth set for the negation of the second statement. And the last one, we have this. Again, we will have the P statement first. To obtain the truth set for our P statement, we will firstly be solving the given inequality. By doing so, we have the following. Similarly to what is done for Q statement in the second example, we will consider our universal set and find those values that will make this true. And this gives us these values. Writing it as a set, we have this. And now, we can obtain our P complement given by this. Secondly, the Q statement. This is again a linear equation. So by solving for the value of x, we have the following. Now, by considering our universal set, we found out that the obtained value of x is found nowhere in the set. Hence, the value is rejected. So our Q is an empty set. Obtaining Q complement gives us this one. And finally, we have this truth set for the negation of the third given statement.